Hi there. I'm wanting to do a series on the books in my life that have really changed me. And I want to start with a book that really shifted the entire direction of my life. And I know that like that's a that's like a catchword, you know, the thing that changed my life. But these were th these were books that actually redirected my entire existence and that I'm still influenced by today. So I thought it would be fun to kind of review these books and, and talk about them a little bit. Um, in the mid-1970s, I was about 12 years old, my family had been really struggling financially. Um, we just were poor. Blah, blah, blah. But one day we were wandering through a flea market and just looking at the things on for sale there. And because I'm a crazy bookworm and I read everything, anything that's got a word on it, I'm going to read it. Um, and I read every single book that I could ever lay my hands on back then. I picked up this large paperback and I, I noticed it because it had a cow and a draft horse in stalls and a picture on the front. And this book was called Self-Sufficiency on Five Acres, and it was by an English gentleman by the name of John Seymour. And this book was organized by the seasons of the year, so spring, summer, winter, fall, and the planting and other activities that would go along with those seasons in order for people to eat their food completely from their own efforts on their own property. And I was just so fascinated by this idea that you could, by your own efforts, eat your own food. Um, I had seen how difficult it was for my family, who was, you know, we were small town people. We lived in town. We shopped at the grocery store. We generally, we had gardens at times, but most of the time we didn't. It was really hard for my family to survive in this constructed money economy and I was beginning to be a little bit aware of that and I was beginning to wonder why we got away from providing for ourselves through our own efforts and so this book was fascinating to me and I just lived in this whole world of the John Seymour self-sufficient self farm for weeks as I was you know every time I had a chance I just would pick it up and devour it and I just dreamed of this life where you had these close relationships with animal partners who would actually help you do the work on the farm and harvesting carrots from the winter garden beds that you'd put straw down in in late fall and planting fruit trees and rotating crops from year to year. And so there were illustrations in this book that were beautiful. They were really cool hand-drawn illustrations in this book and there was illustrations of the farm layout like almost like a plan view but it had perspective and it showed buildings and how they related to each other and pathways and ways to get in and out and pastures and barns and how they were related to each other and that was fascinating to me just that plan view was huge for me there were greenhouses in this plan that that you grew spring seedlings in and compost piles and all these things. So this was a different kind of farm than I had grown up knowing about. You know, the farms in the Midwestern U.S. are a whole monoculture of, of corn or soybeans or something like that that you would sell and then get money and then go to the grocery store. And this was not that kind of farm. This was the kind of farm where you grew all of the variety of your own food. So um, you didn't have to sell it in a block or starve to death. You would be eating a glorious variety of foods from your own hands effort and from your own heart. And I just fell in love with this idea. <laughs> and it, it percolated in my brain literally <laughs> for weeks and it, fundamentally changed me. At 12, I was kind of an awkward girl with glasses and people picked on me because I was the girl in the front of the class that raised my hand and gave all the answers. I was a, an avid learner, a reader, an absorber of information, but 
I was not actually an actor in the world. I did not do stuff much. I loved to learn, but I hadn't really learned how to apply that learning to my actual life or to actual goals. And now I had a super clear picture in my mind of what I wanted, and I wanted it really badly. <laughs> that life was just everything to me. So things that I wanted, I wanted a farm. I wanted more than five acres because I wanted some forest land and a creek. I wanted a big garden that we could rotate the crops in. I wanted to grow food for myself and my family and can it and preserve it. I wanted animals as both companions and helpers in the, in the activities on the farm. I wanted a big house with a big kitchen so that I could do all the food prep and pres preserving of food myself. I wanted a greenhouse so I could start seedlings in the spring. I wanted a barn for the animals, a chicken coop, uh, you know, all the different pieces of that dream, of that self-sufficiency dream. And I wanted my children to be able to just like run through the grass and pick, pick up bugs and play with the dogs and feed the chickens and have a natural kind of connection with nature and a natural life, a real life. And that to me just changed my brain. <laughs> it shifted me in a totally new direction. Um, I had none of the skills or resources to pull any of this off. It was totally a pipe dream. But it was such a powerful dream that it motivated me. I knew I would have to learn a whole lot more about a whole lot of different topics. I knew I would have to practice and do things and not just sit on my knowledge and think that that was enough. I somehow had to get resources to make this dream happen. And all of that, when I was 12, 13 years old, seemed completely and utterly impossible. Really a pipe dream in my mind. But that dream never went away. And through all of the different places I've lived and all of the things that I've experienced, that dream has always been there and it's always motivated me to go forward. It's been a really long and winding journey and I'm in my late 50s now, but what's so cool is that my dream has mostly come true. I have a small farm, it's a very small farm, it's nothing near five acres even, it's just a few acres, but the bones are there. So I have a garden, I have sheep that I raise, I have, actually right now I have a couple of new donkeys, <laughs> um, hopefully they will be useful, they're right now not particularly useful, but the bones of that dream are there. And I know so much more about what that dream actually means and how to accomplish each of those parts. So is this life just like I had planned when I was 12 years old? Absolutely not. I had particular, like, like the direction that the house faced and what the house looked like and all those things. Those, that's not exactly the same as the dream that I had when I was 12, of course. But it is just as fulfilling and fun and challenging and glorious as I had dreamed it was going to be all those years ago. And it kept me going all those years. So this book, I think, went out of print years ago. It took me a long time to find it again. My dog-eared, well-loved copy that I got when I was 12 was ruined in some flooding in a, in a house, in a storage unit years ago, and I had to sadly throw it away. It was one of the most painful things I ever did was throw that book away, but it was moldy. <laughs> but a few years ago, I found a reprinted version. I think, as I said before, it's in a different, with a different title. And without the lovely front cover that made me go open it up in the first place, but all the beautiful illustrations are still there. All of the words are still there. And it's hard to find it now, but I will try to put a description in the, in, I'll put a link in the description below. So do you have a book or a film or a, a, a website or an app or something else that changed the course of your life? 
I would actually really love to hear about that. So if you have something like that, just put a comment in the box below. Um, I would really like to hear about your story and I'm sure there are some others who would as well. So join me next time for another book that changed my life because actually being a reader, there are a lot of books that actually changed my life. I don't know that any of them changed them as drastically and, and fundamentally as this one has, but we are going to talk about some very cool books who, that really did change parts of my life for the better, and I hope you'll join me for those in the future. Thanks. See you guys later. Bye-bye.